是梁彩玲，欢迎大家收看《英文检定一》第十五讲的节目。今天要来谈的是 admitting flaws， 如何承认自己的错误，取得给人家更多的信赖。首先来看课程重点，第一个课程重点要谈的是英文的配搭词，比方说 discovery， 发现了什么东西，你用动词要用 make， make a discovery。那做实验就不是 make。An experiment 要用 conduct an experiment， 类似这样的配搭词。那发音练习是要练习 an 跟 ng 的发音。第三个重点是求职相关的用语，比方说工作 job， 你的 resume 履历表。那同时有很多人来 apply， 这些人叫 candidates。那如果需要写介绍信，英文叫 letter of reference。那人人事部门叫 personnel。OK， 好，接下来我们要来听一下 Dr. Culture 对我们课文的补充。This story introduces us to two very important ideas: critical thought and criticism. First off, let's look at the situation from a critical thought point of view. In America, people value it when you're a critical thinker. What this means is that you don't take information at face value. You always have to question why something is believed to be the way it is. For example, when someone tells you a story, even if it is someone older and more specialized than you are. You still try and think critically about the story by always questioning the truth or plausibility of the story. You don't automatically assume that the story is true just because a person more experienced than yourself told it. So you start thinking about the story to figure out whether it makes enough sense to you. Or if you are being tricked or lied to, there are two reasons why being a critical thinker is important. Firstly, if you proceed through life always thinking critically, then you will not get tricked, or at least it will be much less likely that you'll be tricked. This means that at your job, in your family. Among your friends, or just on the street, you simply don't believe everything everyone tells you. Imagine for a moment that you were the type of person that believes everything people say. Over time, you would believe a lot of ridiculous things, which would cause other people. To think that you're a fool when you talk about such ridiculous things with other people. When you actually meet a smart person, or a person who thinks critically, then they will question everything that you say, and will realize that your stories are wrong, and you'll probably end up feeling like quite a fool. This is why companies want people that think critically. They want people that will look at every opportunity with the thought of, "Is this too good to be true?" Always in the back of their mind. What people mean by "too good to be true" is that if something appears to be such a great opportunity that it seems impossible. Then it is probably a trick, 
In other words, it is too good to be true or believable. This is why in the job application process, if an employer sees a resume that is perfect, he will start to question the truth of it. He'll ask himself questions like, how has a person who's been working for all these years never received any criticism? How can it be that this guy is totally perfect when I've never met anyone that is 100% perfect? Therefore, if you have the opportunity to hire someone who doesn't pretend to be perfect or try and hide their past mistakes, then you can see that this person is a human being. A personnel director would much rather hire a person who tries to learn from their mistakes and admits to their faults because he could count on them to become better employees for the company. 听完了 Dr. Culture 对课文的解释，我们要来听课文的内容。那请同学们把听到的内容填上去。In the mid 1980s, researchers at Cleveland State University made a startling discovery. They conducted an experiment by creating two fictitious job candidates, David and John. The candidates had identical resumes and letters of reference. The only difference was that John's letter included the sentence, "Sometimes John can be difficult to get along with." They showed the resumes to a number of personnel directors. Which candidate did the personnel directors overwhelmingly prefer? Difficult to get along with John. The researchers concluded the criticism of John. Made praise of John more believable. Admitting John's wart actually helped sell John. Admitting flaws gives you more credibility. It is a key to selling. In the mid 1980s. Researchers at Cleveland State University made a startling discovery. They conducted an experiment by creating two fictitious job candidates, David and John. The candidates had identical resumes and letters of reference. The only difference was that John's letter included the sentence, "Sometimes John can be difficult to get along with." They showed the resumes to a number of personnel directors. Which candidate did the personnel directors overwhelmingly prefer? Difficult to get along with John. The researchers concluded the criticism of John made praise of John more believable. Admitting John's wart actually helped sell John. Admitting flaws gives you more credibility. It is a key to selling. Next, we're going to look at the answer. Let's see how the students answered. First, we'll look at the first sentence. In the mid 1980s, researchers at Cleveland State University made a startling discovery. 这里有第一个字的答案是 startling, s t a r t l i n g。整句的意思是，在一九八零年中期 ，Cleveland State University, Cleveland 克里夫兰州立大学的研究者发现了 ，OK， 他们做发现了一个很重大的、很惊人的发现。Startling 就是很惊人的，哎。这个也许大家以前都不是这么想，后来发现哦，原来是这样。发现什么事情呢 ？They conducted an experiment. 这是第二句，第二个空格。Conducted, C-O-N-D-U-C-T-E-D. 
，他们进行了一项实验。这个实验要做什么呢？他用 by by creating two fictitious job candidates。第三题的答案是 fictitious。F I C T I T I O U S, fictitious, fictitious job, candidates. 第四题是 candidates, C A N D I D A T E S. 有两个职务的候选人，就是有两个人去同时 apply 申请一个工作，一个是 David， 一个是 John. The candidates had 第五个答案。Identical, I D E N T I C A L. Identical, 什么呢 ？Identical 是相同的，他们有着相同的。第六题的答案 ，resumes, R E S U M E S. 他们有着相同的履历表。还有呢 ，a letter of reference. 第七题是 reference, R E F E R E N C E. 这些都是我们求职的时候需要用到的。你第一个要履历表，通常在国外的公司，尤其是英美国家，他们会很看重这种推荐信。比方说，你要去应征保姆，你即使当个保姆，你都需要有推荐信。你前一个雇主对你的评语是什么？那现在通常还会看你网络的行为，所以同学们在网络上也要注意你的言行，不可以乱讲脏话。有很多人觉得，反正网络上看不到，但是现在很多的公司是会去查看。你的网路行为，来看看你的 resume 跟人家写来的推荐信，跟你的网路的行为是否符合你这个人的形象。The only difference was that John's letter included the sentence. 这两个人什么都一样，对不对？履历也一样，介绍信也一样。唯一的不同 ，the only difference was that 约翰的信谈到了一句话 ，included the sentence， 只。只有这一点不同，那这一点不同就是 makes a big difference. 他说了什么呢？ Sometimes John can be difficult to get along with. 哎，这句话是好话还是不好的呢？他说有时候 John can be difficult to get along with. 这个人有时候嗯有点难相处。哎。你想想看，如果你的介绍信里面有这句话，你想你的老板会比较喜欢还是不喜欢呢？如果你觉得人家会因为这句话不喜欢的，我们要来接着看后面发生什么事情了。They show the resumes to a number of personnel directors. 他们把这些介绍信，呃，还有履历表给很多的 personnel， 这是第八题的答案。Personnel, P E R S O N N E L, 人事部门的主管。Which candidates did the personnel directors overwhelmingly prefer? 这是第九格的答案。Overwhelmingly, O V E R W H E L M I N G L Y, overwhelmingly 就是全面性的。你觉得谁会？呃，这些人事部门的主管会选谁呢？是有说这个人有时候有点难相处的，还是全部都讲好话的？你们觉得会是谁呢 ？Difficult to get along with John. OK， 是他们是选这个，他们是选说这个人有时候会有一点点难相处啊，不是全部说好话的人就赢了。那为什么会这样呢？好，我们要来听听看专家们的研究了。The researchers concluded. 好，我们做完这个研究，看到结果是非常令人意外的，对不对？全部的履历都一样，资格都一样，条件都一样，但是最后的 reference letter 有一句不一样，就说有点名。哎，这个人有时候有点难搞，这个人有时候有点难相处。OK。居然这个人是胜出的，所有的人事部门的经理、人事部门的主管是会选择这样的人。那为什么呢 ？OK， 我们要看 concluded the criticism of John。criticism of John， 因为他说这个人有点难相处，这个是属于一种 criticism， 就是批评。这样的批评有什么好处呢？为什么所有的人事部门 overwhelmingly 几乎一致性的，就是压倒性的
百分之百呃一百封一百个人里面，可能有九十九个人全部要选这个有缺点的这个人，为什么呢 ？Made praise of John more believable. Oh, okay. 这个就是人性心理学喽。我们现在要学起来。你下次要赞美一个人的时候，或者你要跟别人推荐，极力推荐这个人的时候，你不能都说好话，因为你全部都说好话的时候，人家会觉得啊，真的吗？这个人真的这么厉害吗？真的有这么好吗？因为你最后那句话 ，John can be difficult to get along with sometimes。你最后这句批评。会让你前面对他所有的赞美 more believable， 更可信。OK， admitting John's what？ 这是第十题的答案。W A R T， admitting John's what actually helps sell John。所以你在最后承认他是有缺点的，事实上会帮助你把 John 推销出去。Admitting flaws gives you more credibility. So, when you admit a mistake, it doesn't mean that you are perfect. Perfect is just a kind of perfect. People like this. It gives you more credibility. It makes you more credible. It is a key to selling. So, if you want to sell something, you want to sell something to someone or to someone else, please never forget this rule. 但是前面讲了很多很多好话之后，最后，嗯，要稍微提一下，这个人可能会有什么样预期的，或者可能有什么样的呃小瑕疵或者小缺点，这样会让你前面的赞美更具可靠性。接下来我们来听一下 Dr. Culture 对我们课文的补充说明。Let's discuss the second part, criticism. Criticism and how you handle receiving it. Are also important in American culture. It is assumed that you cannot go through life without doing something wrong and receiving criticism for it. However, it is how you handle this criticism that is important. If you merely take the criticism as an insult to your person and start getting defensive. Then you will not improve as a person. But if you instead take the criticism and use it to make yourself a better person, then that is a much better way of handling criticism. And as a result, you'll become a better person and a better employee. So it is not surprising then. That if you receive a resume that has some criticism on it, then it shows that this person will be able to handle any difficult situation they might face at a company, such as receiving criticism. When an employer sees this, he might think, "This person knows how to handle criticism. If he makes a mistake." Then he will know how to handle it, and won't take it personally. An important distinction needs to be made here, however, and that is the difference between constructive criticism or good criticism, and bad criticism. Bad criticism is criticism that someone gives to another person without offering any tips. On how to improve in the future, and which is usually mean-spirited. For example, if someone says that report you wrote yesterday was garbage, this type of criticism or advice is not helpful, and will create a bad work environment for everybody. Good criticism. Or constructive criticism, on the other hand, is criticism that offers tips on how to improve in the future. For example, if someone says that report you wrote yesterday wasn't done properly because you forgot to include the sales numbers for the last quarter, so include the numbers next time. This type of criticism 
tells the person where their problem was. They forgot to include the sales numbers. And how they can fix it. Include the sales numbers next time. One last point. A person with warts or who has some imperfections is more appealing to people than someone who is perfect. A person that seems perfect either makes other people jealous or makes people believe that they're lying or hiding something. Being a flawed person, on the other hand, makes you more relatable. People understand flawed people because everybody is flawed and no one's perfect. Colocation。好，我们看第一个配搭词是 make a startling discovery。有了惊人的发现，发现了什么事情？比方说，我们再看一下课本这个例子。in the mid-1980s, researchers at Cleveland State University made a startling discovery. 1980年代的时候,他们有了很惊人的发现。这个Cleveland是美国克里夫兰州立大学, Cleveland State University,他们有了重大惊人的发现。好,那他们这个发现是怎么来的呢? 是因为他们做了一个实验,进行了一项实验。英文用哪一个字做实验 不是do 不是make 是conduct C-O-N-D-U-C-T Conduct an experiment 实验 Experiment Conduct an experiment OK 这个在课文里面有出现过 They conducted an experiment by creating two fictitious, fictitious job candidates David and John 这两个人都是虚拟出来的 David 跟 John 是虚拟出来的, 他们虚拟出这两个人来做实验。下一个, to give someone more credibility, 使某人更可信。我们就是给这个字, give someone more credibility. Okay? 比方说像我们的课文里面的例句, admitting flaws gives you more credibility. 承认错误会让你这个人, 令人更加的信任，所以不要有错误，一直往外推，才会让人家觉得哎，你不太可靠哦，或者一面倒的讲好话。有好的当然要讲，但是把握这个八十二十的原则。好，下一个 key to something key本来是钥匙，那在这里是指某件事情成功的关键。It is a key to selling，就是这是要。大卖或者促销的一个成功的关键 今天要来练习的是N跟NG在发音上有什么不一样 请同学们要注意一下我们现在要做的发音练习这个发音练习不是只有说也会提升你听力的进步 好,第一个字是C-A-N Can can 来注意一下你的舌头的位置这两个音 n 跟 n g 差别在哪里呢 就是你的舌头 ok c a n 念完的时候 can 舌头在哪里 你要顶在上面牙齿的后面 不要动 can 记住这个位置了吗 来同学们练习一遍 can can 记住这个位置,就是你结尾的时候,舌头顶在牙齿的后面,不要动。来念下一个字,跑步, run, run,舌头在哪里,感受一下, run, 有没有顶到上面牙齿? 有,好,停在那里,不要动,因为当你动了,就变成下面这个音了。R, U, N, 跟 R, U, N, G, 意思一不一样。一个是跑步, 一个是ring, ran, run, 按门铃或者这个ring, ran, run 的三态,它是另外一个字了,按门铃, ring, 打电话, ring, ran, run, 它是PP,就变成run, 
？Run， 哎，你的舌头在哪里？有顶在牙齿后面吗？没有，它什么位置也没有碰到，它叫 run。前面的是 run， 舌头顶在牙齿上面，牙齿的后面顶住不要动，这个是 run， 没有碰到任何的位置。这个的发音跟下面这个字是一模一样的。Wrong. What's wrong? Wrong. OK. 字看起来不一样，但是发音的部位是一样的。那下一个 ，R A N G. Rain. Rain. 跟 R A N， 它们两个差别在哪里呢？跟前面的 wrong， 跟 run 一样。就是你的舌头位置要不要顶在牙龈的牙齿的后面？像 R A N G 就是 rain， rain， R A N 是 rain， rain。你要感受到你的舌头顶在牙齿那里。好，同样的道理，我们来练习一下下面的 sin， S I N， 在英文里面是罪的意思，犯罪了。请同学们这个念到这个字的时候，不要跟 crime 混淆了。Crime 是犯罪，但是那是属于刑事罪，比方说杀人啦、放火啦、犯法的那种叫 crime。Sin， 比方说你说个小谎啦，你嫉妒，你会因为你嫉妒人家或者你说个谎被抓去关起来吗？不会，但是它是一个 sin， 在圣经里面认为这个是一个罪。OK， 人有很多的原罪或者罪，这种罪跟刑法的那种 crime 是不一样的。好，那。下一个 s i n g 怎么念 ？sing sing， 感受一下你舌头有碰到前面的牙齿吗？没有，这个是没有碰到。sing 唱歌 ，Let's sing a song。第、这、一个字是 startling， startling 是惊人的，这是从 startle 这个字 s t a r t l e 动词。You startled me. 你吓到我了。那吓到加上去一加上 i n g 就变成惊人的。后面可以惊人的任何东西。Oh, this is a startling discovery. 惊人的就是出乎人意料之外的。Astonishing, startling, surprising 都是同样的意思，很惊人的。下一个我们看 conduct 这个字。C O N D U C T 是执行 conduct， 那你后面加上 O R conductor 就可以变成人，执行什么什么职务的人，他可以是指挥，可以是车长 conduct， 执行，执行一项，进行一项研究，进行一项实验，我们用 conducted an experiment。下一个字是 fictitious， F I C T I T I O U S。这个字是虚构的，虚构这个字原来有一个字，小说叫 fiction， 科幻小说是 science fiction， 所以 fiction 本来就是虚构的，就是虚构的 fiction 的形容词 fictitious。OK， 下一个字 candidate，candidate，c a n d i d a t e 是候选人，这个候选人可以用在任何的场所，比方说你只要有选举。呃，就会有候选人嘛，总统候选人、市长候选人、市议员候选人、班代候选人，对不对？学校的各种候选人 ，OK， 都叫 candidate。校长候选人，通通叫做 candidates。那它是可数的，有超过两个以上，你就加 s。candidates。OK， 下一个 identical， 同样的 identical 表示是一模一样的意思。I D E N T I C A L， 它从动词 identify，identify identify 就是认定，像你的身份证叫做你的 I D， 就是 identification card。那它的形容词 identical 是相同的，这些字根都是，请同学们注意一下。下一个字是 resume，R E S U M E， 这个字很常用哦。当你现在要求职的时候，就需要履历表。履历表的英文就叫 resume， 它这个字原来从法文来，所以中英会放在后面 resume。你去求职的时候，人家会需要你要一种东西，很重要的叫介绍信。介绍信就是 reference，reference reference 就是我推荐给你
。那它的动词是 refer, R E F E R。好，谢谢各位同学收看我们今天英文检定一第十五讲的节目 ，Admitting Flaws， 让我们要谦卑，让我们可以常常承认自己的错误之后，我们的优点就会被更加的强化，不要死不认错哦。